Welcome back. In our previous lesson, we started with a screencast of me showing you how I went about finding vulnerable components. In this lesson, we're going to finish up with me showing you how I found and how I fixed those flaws. After this lesson, you'll be able to find vulnerable libraries inside your code base using a tool like Dependency Checker. You will be able to research the flaw and the find a suitable library replacement. In this screencast, I noted the most recent version of Xtreme. If that's changed by the time you're taking this course, just update to whatever is the latest version and use that. This will be our last demo screencast, so let's do it. All right, hopefully you had a chance to play around with this vulnerability, and maybe you have some questions about how it works, but it's pretty easy to fix. So all we need to do is use the most recent version of Xtreme, and going through the dependency checker, opening these Xtreme uh, github.io change logs, you can actually look to see what is the most recent update to Xtreme, and it's version 1.4.11.1. So we need to update to that version. If we come back to this, we can obviously see this is the vulnerable code here, and we will simply go to the pomxml file and update to the most recent version. So you can see that we're using Xtreme 1.4.7, and we want to be using Xtreme 1.4.11.1. Let's get that version. And it'll take a second for your system to update to that. I want to caution sometimes, um, whenever you're modifying packages inside here, technically speaking, Maven is supposed to take precedence of the closest package to the project. However, depending on how your compiler and your Maven is configured, it may not use that. So I know from experience that this extreme is actually referenced and brought into as a dependency twice within the lessons. So the other place that it's brought in, so we, we already changed it under vulnerable components, but we need to also change it underneath the WebGoat lessons parent. And you can see that the same version of Xtreme is actually used there as well. Whoops. We want to get that version. All right. So I'm going to stop this. And I want to also put in a test case to make sure my package actually got updated. Because sometimes, depending on your IDE, if you simply replay something, it may not actually update that package. So you don't have to do this if you're confident that your Maven clean actually cleaned and you re rebuilt. But since I'm not confident, I'm going to do a system.out.print line. And the extreme that we have, we're going to get the class at runtime. And we're going to get the package for it and we're gonna get the implementation version. So hopefully that prints out whatever, the 1.4.11.1. And I'll even leave myself a to-do, take this line out after we made sure. I'll go ahead and hit play. All right, let's give it a try. Going to log in. Vulnerable components, 12. And I'm going to just take this payload from before, paste it in here, and I'll even bring up the terminal where I'm running the Python HTTP server. And I'm going to clear out the terminal just so it's easy to see going to hit go and nothing comes up here but I also didn't see a response here so it sounds like something may have broken and if we look at 
what gets returned is an exception. Doc type is not allowed for this feature. So there's another exception up here where for the servlet and there's a disallowed doc type. But at minimum we know that we're running we're writing the the right um, we're using the right version of the library. So if we go through the code just to see where the exception was thrown and it looks like it was when we were parsing in the XML. Now let's go ahead and try the real uh, this should work. This is an example of something that should be allowed. And let's see what we get there. I'm going to clear out the console of my IDE. And we get security framework of Xtreme not initialized. Xtreme isn't probably vulnerable. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, Xtreme at least is nice enough to give us a warning when this is the case. But if we actually read the documentation, just using the most up-to-date version of Xtreme does not protect us. So we need to do a couple other things. I'm going to take this line out since we know it works properly, but we need to ask Xtreme to set up default security on our instance of Xtreme. So this Xtreme is our instance. Now, if you can go ahead and run this. This is in their documentation. It asks you to do this for security reasons. But if even if you ran this, you would have another error. So to prevent that error, we need to tell Xtreme what items, what objects we're going to allow for it to parse. So we're going to ask our instance of Xtreme. Um, remember, on this line, I'm actually using a capital X Xtreme. On this line, I'm doing a lowercase Xtreme. We're going to tell it that the allowed types that it can use are the following classes. I'm going to create an array of classes and I'm going to feed it my contact.class. So essentially any other class other than contact.class will not be allowed. So when it comes down to here, we should only see contact be the thing that gets allowed and everything else disallowed. Now, there's a conversion exception that this class is watching for, and it's looking for the word integer in the class. I'm actually going to catch all other exceptions just so we can see what comes out of here. And I can actually use the same return line as above. And then I'll just write catching Actually, we're, we can give the feedback of ex.get message. So the feedback we get on a failure is going to be the message that the exception was created with. So I'm going to recompile. Now that we have started, I'm going to go back to WebGoad. I'll do a refresh just so I get a new page. So the thought here is that this should work perfectly fine. We hit go and we don't see any errors. So obviously this has no feedback, but we just don't see any errors, which is good. And we'll try our bad payload. I'll bring up my terminal so that we can see and you can see that it fails to do anything bad with that you will see a bunch of errors in your IDE and the errors are coming from the fact that this EX doesn't have the right kind of messaging that it wants in in the for, for, for the feedback to append to it um, it's not a big deal we can obviously just do catch exception track feedback and just give the same message that is returned from that, that the web code designer behind this used and and that'll be sufficient it, it'll it's a little bit misleading but but we can go with it 
And if we just recompile until our web code session comes up. Okay, looks like it's up. Just refresh that page to make sure we get a new. I'm going to clear out my console, get our bad payload, put it in here, hit go, and we don't get a large exception. We just get fatal error. Doctype is not allowed when the feature is used, and this is something gets that gets enabled when you are using set default security. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. So that concludes our last demo screencast of me showing you how I went about patching this vulnerability. Now that you've seen how I did it, it's time for you to give it a try. Also remember, there's a discussion thread where your fellow learners are discussing what they're doing, asking questions, and you can share what you've learned. And you can learn from the others. Have fun patching and help your peers.